see it'll come back and once it go live. All right, I think we're live there. Let me hit the record. Good on recording. Awesome. I think we're live. Good to go. Welcome. Welcome. It has been a while. Welcome to a new episode, another episode of The Healthy Dose, episode number six. I'm really excited to share with you today's special guest, and uh, we're going to be talking about everything vegetables, right, and the power of vegan power, veggies, eat your veggies. I'm real excited. Let me just share with you, if you haven't watched an episode of The Healthy Dose, you may be caught the Daily Dose, don't get confused. I do a daily show at 8 a.m., just more for encouragement, inspiration. Started 200 and something, 30 days ago, I guess it was. And then something was just kind of driving me like, okay, there needs to be more. There's, I have so many great connections of people. And I wanted to share with you, before we get started, before I make the introduction, what, why I'm doing this Healthy Dose show, the Healthy Dose. It's on Thursdays, and I'm gonna try to do my best to get more. I have a lot of great people. The special guest that we have today is one of them. Can't wait for you to introduce him and have him share with you the power of vegetables and, and vegan, like a vegan lifestyle and what that's all about. Well, let me just share with you real quick the mission. It's simple, really having enjoyed and connecting and being encouraged by other health and fitness professionals over the years and years and years, um, and also by so many other fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, Christians that have, you know, cha challenging times like we've all been faced coronavirus, lockdown, you know, politics, all that kind of stuff. Just, I really felt God was just nudging me to kind of just step outside of my comfort level and to take another step closer to him. And what I realized when it, when it came to stepping out and getting closer to him, it meant getting closer to other people. And, um, and who I'm going to be introducing in just a moment is just one of those people who I'm really excited to introduce. And this really is not much of a platform. Maybe you can call it a podcast, but I just knew one of the best ways to reach more people and to share exciting things about health and living. And also my faith is to bring it to the people who are watching. Those of you who are my friends on Facebook, maybe you've been following me for a while. Maybe you're brand new. Maybe I've even sent you a message to say, hey, what's up and be social. That's what this is all about, right? I just wanted to, to thank you for coming on. And just a reminder, the Healthy Dose, the show is, is a completely free and is not going to be something that I charge ever for. Um, this is not something about money making. It's truly just to provide some value, insight, and really an opportunity for you to learn and to learn from our guests. And something that I'm not an expert in, that's why I bring in experts. I'm not the vegan, vegetarian type of expert. Um, and again, I hope if you, maybe you're interested, maybe you're thinking about changing up your diet or thinking about maybe going in, um, into more of a vegetable based or whole food and that type of thing that this would be very valuable for you and uh with that i said i'm excited to introduce as i mentioned before and really whether your faith is strong or not i just want to ask this question before we kind of get started wouldn't it be awesome if you knew how to live a faith-filled healthy and fit life so that you could pursue all that god's calling you and his plan for your life, and not only that, the life of generations to come. So with that, I'm super, super honored to introduce you to today's guest, who likes to keep things pretty simple, right? You're a regular guy. Up north, we had that connection. And uh, AJ, welcome to the, the Healthy Dose. AJ is a vegan fitness pro who specializes in helping men shred fat and build muscle on a vegan diet. Age is also a family man, so we also have that connection. Although he has some younger ones, I have the older ones. You can tell he has a beautiful haircut and I have the beautiful beard, right? <laughs> but uh, AJ's been married for eight years. He has a five-year-old daughter and a two-year-old son. And uh, with that, uh, again, you know, I just wanted to say thank you. And I wanted to welcome AJ to the daily, AJ to the Healthy Dose. Welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. I really appreciate you having me on. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, just tell us a little bit about yourself before I'm going to ask you that question about what it was like when you were younger, but can you just kind of share a little bit about yourself? Yeah, for sure. So um, like you mentioned, so I am a, a vegan dad. Uh, so I'm in my, uh, my mid thirties now. Uh, I've been married, like you said, for, for eight years, have a couple kids that keep me 
uh, insanely busy. Yeah. So uh, my daughter's five, uh, my son's two. And uh, yeah, I mean, when you have kids that young, you, you understand why, uh, why fitness is definitely so important, right? So uh, they keep you, whether you want to be exercising or not, they, uh, they're just keeping you on the go uh, constantly. And uh, yeah, no, just in, in, you know, kind of, you know, meeting up with you, Mark, you know, we had the opportunity to, to kind of meet face to face in Florida. That was, uh, awesome. that was awesome um, for lunch there. And, uh, you know, since that time, I've been kind of, you know, refocusing to on, you know, what I need to be doing uh, to kind of be the, the better, like, Christian leader in my household. So, uh, yeah, no, thank you for that and uh, uh, bringing me into your world here. Hey, man, it's an honor to have you. And uh, before, like, we kind of jump into the meet, I know, you know, talking about vegan, some people get, and I, you know, let me just clear the air because you see vegan, is it vegan or vegan, tomato, tomato, does it really matter? Or is it yeah. really? I, I think you can say it however you want, Mark. I, I, <laughs> I wanna, yeah. Then you're basically saying I'm saying it wrong. Okay, <laughs> so vegan, vegan. Vegan, yeah, yeah. All right, vegan. And then they should put an I in there instead of an E, all right? Let's just call it an A. Then it'd be vegan, right? <laughs> well, we're going to be talking about um, what, it, what it is, what that truly is. But before we even jump into kind of understanding what a vegan lifestyle is, can us just share kind of backstory, like your childhood and um, like where you grew up and just kind of give me a, and just a shotgun version of what it was like as a, as a young AJ. Yeah, sure. So uh, I'm from Southeastern Mass uh, originally. Um, I'm back up here right now uh, for the Thanksgiving holiday, but I'm, uh, I'm living in North Carolina right now. Uh, but uh, essentially kind of growing up, I was on, you know, the, the SAD, the, the standard American diet, right? So I was just kind of eating normal, normal foods, you know, a lot of uh, animal based products. Um, didn't really think too much about, you know, nutrition up until I hit probably about like 14 or 15 years old. Uh, that's when I really started getting super heavy, like into fitness. So uh, you know, for me kind of growing up, um, I looked at my parents. So, uh, my parents were always in uh, good shape. Um, my father was always kind of going to the gym and I remember, I think I was like 12 or 13 is when I started bugging him to kind of take me with him. And, uh, so that's where, really where I learned about like fitness. Uh, and then from like the, you know, weightlifting perspective, I learned it from my, uh, from my father. So, um, that's when I kind of got super kind of into nutrition. And for me, I just kind of, you know, really focusing in on like the animal foods, right. For those, for that protein source. So, uh, you know, in my late teens to early twenties and even throughout my twenties, really just kind of focusing in on that, I'd say like a heavy kind of meat-based diet, uh, really super, super high in protein, um, which was, you know, what I was eating right up until I hit, uh, I hit the age of 30 and that's kind of when I made a, made a bit of a switch. Yeah, awesome. And it's, um, you know, we, I grew up on a farm, so we had access to fruits and vegetables, something I didn't really like as a kid. Like, of course, like a lot of kids eat your, your lima beans and your broccoli and yeah. your spinach. And uh, while my taste buds have definitely changed, like when was it, was a switch then when you were in your thirties, when you really just switched over? Yeah. So what happened for me, like I said, I, I thought I was, um, you know, living this super like healthy lifestyle. I was going to the gym every day. Like I said, I was, I was focusing on the foods that I thought I should be eating. And for me, that was like some sort of meat at like every meal. Um, I had a, I had a physical and at that time, my daughter was two and my wife was pregnant with our son. And, uh, after I got the, the results from the, the blood work, my cholesterol was like through the roof. Um, so for me, I have, uh, just a family history of high, high cholesterol my on my father's side my father has it my grandfather has it and on my mom's side uh, my grandfather passed away from heart disease before he hit 60 and then uh, we recently just lost uh, my uncle uh, from heart disease and uh, yeah he wasn't he wasn't too much older so um you know like for me i had it in my family and uh, so that for me that's when i was just like well, i have to I, I have a couple options right i can either kind of be on that path where I'm going to have to take medication for the rest of my life to kind of keep my cholesterol in check, or I can just eliminate cholesterol. So I went with uh, the latter and uh, looked to kind of remove cholesterol from my diet. And that's when I started doing a lot of research on, you know, veganism. And that's kind of just the, the way that I went. Yeah. And you just started specializing and that's what now you work with your clients on that. That's awesome. Yeah. So can we, just for like the beginner, because I would even say is that it's very easy to get confused when you hear, whether you say vegan or vegan, 
or vegetarianism and you know lacto vegetarianism pescatarianism yeah. i don't know if we can go down like a whole different that might be even a whole nother conversation but just in a nutshell can you just kind of share for the new listener or somebody that's watching that's really interested maybe thought about maybe being a vegetarian and a vegan and what that what the differences between those are just kind of on a basic level yeah, for sure. So if you're thinking, uh, so if you kind of break it into like three categories, so you have your vegan, your vegetarian, and then you said Presbyterian. Uh, so vegan is somebody that removes pretty much all animal products uh, from their diet. Uh, so that's, that's essentially anything that has come in contact with an animal or that comes from an animal, I should say. So, you know, that's, of course, it's like all meats, it's, it's all fish, it's all uh, dairy, it's all uh, like fowl, all chicken products. Um, it, it's everything um, when it comes from a, uh, to a dietary perspective. Somebody that's uh, more vegetarian, um, they'll still eat uh, dairy. So they'll still have their dairy. They'll have cow's milk. They'll have cheese. They'll have that kind of stuff. Um, and most vegetarians will eat eggs as well. Uh, for the, from the Presbyterian side, uh, that's more like a, it's kind of like a flex vegan, I would call it, a diet where they'll have uh, some fish every now and then. Uh, but mainly focusing on like a plant-based whole food diet. So if you like, that's kind of like a very like high level overview of some of the differences between some very similar type of diets. I would like say. like uh, what people will say when they do keto, I'm doing a, my version, a modified type keto. Is yeah. kind of, in yeah. a sense, right? Where everybody has like their own. That's good. That makes it really clear. I, mean, I, I knew, but I know a lot of people have that, asked that question. Um, yeah. Just being in the industry for a while. That's really, really helpful. So um, let's talk about, let's get into it. Let's get into meat, the plant power. You know, we, I, we titled this one, the plant power superpowers of fruits and veggies. I know you have five things that, that you have like that you think would be really valuable. So let's, let's jump in. If you want to just kind of start, what's like one of the first things you were talking about that are real valuable about the vegan diet? Yeah, for sure. So, I mean, if you look at, um, if you look at us here in the States, here in America, um, a majority, and unfortunately this is true, but a majority of adults are, they're overweight, right? So uh, I, I think the biggest ben uh, benefit of more like vegan, like that plant-based whole food diet is really around uh, weight loss, right? So um, with, if you're focusing in on plant-based whole foods, you can eat a ton of food, like an absolute full bowl, full plate of rice, beans, potatoes, lettuce, you know, whatever you want to throw in there, really, that's, uh, that's plant-based. Um, and uh, it won't have a ton of calories behind it. So the uh, plant-based whole foods are super high in volume, but they're very low in calories. So that's where it's really helpful for somebody trying to, to lose weight, just because, you know, the biggest issue that I've heard with people trying to lose weight is I'm hungry. <laughs> I'm hungry all the time, right? So uh, if you're on kind of that plant-based diet, you're still eating a ton of food. So you're feeling full throughout the day, but you're at a, you know, you're at a calorie say deficit. Uh, so you're still able to, to lose weight when you're on the diet, which again, if, if, for me, if I'm thinking of like the American population in general, uh, you know, weight loss is usually something that uh, that's crossed pretty much everybody's mind at one point or the other. Yeah, uh, it's and you know even despite the efforts from the vegan world, I mean there. I think what's really great to see is there's a lot more available options now, whether yeah. it be restaurants. Or, like we went, my wife and I were on a date night a couple of weeks ago, and we were at a vegan place. I think I mentioned to you here in Jacksonville. I couldn't remember the name up now offhand. It doesn't matter. But we went and it was truly. And you know we had a really great dinner. Like it, and it's something I'll eat meat. Like I'm not. I'm not a vegan or vegetarian. But uh, I do know the importance and the value of having, obviously, the nutrients, good nutrients in your body, not just for weight loss, but just for good health. Yeah. Um, you know, perfect example we have next week coming up in Thanksgiving. All right. The real question is, do you have a tofurkey or what? <laughs> yeah, no, I do uh, like a fake. Yeah, it's a tofurkey. Yeah. Tofurkey. Like there you go. <laughs> awesome. Well, yeah. I mean, think of, I know a lot of people, I even asked the question. Like what's their favorite thing? And a lot of times it's not the, the turkey, it's the stuffing or maybe it's the, the way they, you know, of course there's all the richness. And again, it's one day out of the year, but one of the ways people just going into kind of on a side tip to help them through the holidays is to pot, like what you're saying, the high volume, like high volume, not like super calorie dense, but they're high on a volume where they'll fill you up. That's really a great thing about, you know, this about doing vegan. So on a weight loss side, it's a great option, right? Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. 
yeah what else yeah so some I'm of the things, i want to know more <laughs> for sure i mean so if we're talking about like common topics uh one of the things that i'm that, that's kind of like in the media i would say and something that i hear about you know quite a bit is around uh, protein um mm -hmm. i'd say it's definitely a very very kind of common uh, topic especially in the vegan community so you know if you're focusing in like on a, a plant-based whole foods diet uh all, all the protein that you actually need is in is in plants right so it's it's part of that that vegan diet uh for me kind of what i just give folks a watch out for right so when you're if you go vegan you know and your, your goal is weight loss like i said it's it's i would say it's easier to obtain on a, on a vegan diet than maybe other diets um, but, uh, what you just have to kind of watch out for is making sure that you're actually eating like, adequate amounts of protein. So, um, you know, there's, there's plenty of kind of like vegan, like doctor advocates out there that say, all you need is like rice and beans. For me, I, I go against that a little bit, uh, just in saying that you do need more protein, uh, especially kind of when you're just starting off to understand what your protein levels need to be. So when you are kind of losing that weight, you're losing fat and, and not and not any uh, lean tissue. So, you know, proteins, things like tofu, tempeh, seitan. Uh, for me, I even mix it up occasionally with like uh, some fake meats, which are, you know, overly processed foods and stuff like that. But again, it, it just gives you another option to uh, to kind of take in that, that protein. Yeah, so it's not what you're saying, basically. It's not really necessarily black and white, like just don't eat, just don't eat, just eat beans to get your protein filled. Yeah. Right? Um, and, and, you know, like just, I think a lot of times we think just the complete protein being more in the meat products versus having that variety of different kinds of vegetable proteins, which will supply it in ad adequate enough. Now, I'll just say, we, we, may, we don't need to talk about this. I know you're competing in like this weekend, you have a competition. So yes. even for the person who wants to go to the next level, right? Like, are you able to get, like, are you able to build muscles and get strong aside from losing weight? Can you get like, you know, good defi defined muscles and really like, can you compete just being on a vegan diet? Yeah, absolutely. So that's something that you kind of touched upon, you know, at, at the beginning with, uh, you know, both of us, you know, being fathers, having a family and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So for me, when I made that transition to, to being a vegan, you know, part of my process was, okay, well, if I want my kids to do this, you know, I need to make sure that it's going to put them in the best position, you know, if they want to play sports, if they want to do something, I'm not going to put them, you know, at a disadvantage with their diet. Um, so let, let me test this on myself. So, uh, yeah, no, I've been down that path and, uh, yeah, like you said, I'm, I'm competing on Saturday in a bodybuilding competition. Um, I've been completely vegan, uh, for three years. So it's definitely, uh, it's definitely possible. Uh, you just have to be like a little bit more aware. I would say just like any, any diet, you know, any dietary plan that you're on, uh, they all work. Um, as long as you're being like a, you know, diligent about it and being focused. And yeah, I mean, like you said, uh, you know, for me, I, I'm, I'm vegan for, for three years and, uh, I haven't had too much issues kind of, you know, packing on the, the additional uh, muscle mass. Awesome. You know, what, what I like to about hearing what you're saying too is, and just honestly is resonating with me now is that you're just, you, what makes it easy as far as the weight loss is that you just have less options. I mean, there's lots of options to yep. eat food. There's lots of, like we talked about, there's restaurants now that catered purely to those, even in some fast food places, right? Chains, even you see them in some of the, the mass chains, there's lots of vegan options, vegan options. And um, what I like is that it, it, it just removes like the, the okay, well, if I'm going to go vegan, then I'm not, I'm just going to be away from this stuff. And things that get a lot of people in trouble, not so much the protein in meat, it's the, the way it's cooked, how it's fried, deep fried, how much of it, the saturated fats, all those types of things that go along on it, high cholesterol, right? Those types of things. And uh, that it just, uh, so for someone that may be struggling, you know, trying to diet with just a regular diet, right? The, the sad diet um, is, is there just um, maybe given that an option, right? That's why, again, there's no black and white, right or wrong. I just wanted to provide some really useful, valuable information not only can you lose weight you can even compete in a you know in a body uh, a bodybuilding competition which is pretty awesome to think yeah. so like the person that thinks you can't do it here we are to tell you that it is possible and you've been doing it three years yeah yeah hats off years. hats off to you that's awesome so yeah what else i know you said five things so one about weight loss protein what else we got yeah so like you said like um veganism is definitely like growing uh, exponentially in, in popularity. So if you and I were having this conversation, say like 10, 15 years ago, <laughs> when I was never even thinking about it being a vegan at that point, but 
uh, if we were having that discussion, it would be like super challenging, right? For me to kind of come on and uh, say that it's easy uh, to become a vegan, but um, I would say now it's easier than, than ever. I mean, like you said, restaurants are dedicated to it. Even any, any restaurant that, that you go to, if you say, well, I don't eat like, it, it, or I'm vegan, they'll say, oh, okay, well, we can either it's on the menu already, or we can kind of whip something up for you. So that's not, that's not an issue at all. For the, you know, what I've had kind of questions about with people like looking to transition is, okay, well, uh, I'll use an example like lasagna. Like, I, I love lasagna. So I'm not, I, I can't be vegan because, you know, I, I can't give up my lasagna. I'm like, okay, all right, Google lasagna. And then before you hit enter, type the word vegan in front of it. You'll get about like 25, 30 more, like super good recipes on, you know, what you can make on a vegan diet. So it's not about, you know, it's not really about like loss of food. Uh, the food still tastes great. It still tastes amazing. It's just really, you know, having a different outlook on, you know, what you're, you know, what you want to do, especially like for your internal health, um, you know, on that, on that vegan diet. Yeah. It's funny. You're saying that like just Google, put it in front. <laughs> and it just made me think when I was in school in Buffalo, my first training position at a community center and they had this chili, but it was vegetarian chili. Yeah. It was awesome, but I didn't taste, it tastes like normal chili. It really did. It had everything else in it. Had, it had beans in it and had the like the tomato and it was just really really good and you know it it, it wasn't like the exact taste but it was actually uh, it was delicious like it was great and even like restaurants now with great you know people that have dialed that in more because it's now more widely accepted and people are asking for it right is that now there's more options even in grocery stores you there's sections just oh, yeah. that are vegan sections that give you really lots of great options um, which is awesome. You're, that's such a great tip too. Just Google, you know, put meatloaf and then put, you know, <laughs> vegan meatloaf or turkey and put vegan turkey and then there'll yeah. be the options for you. Um, I think the hard thing is just thinking like, oh, I can't give up this or I can't give up that. But it could be, what are you gaining? If you're really struggling with your weight and you're doing it on a diet that does include meat, maybe that would be an option for, that would be viable for somebody to do. That's awesome. Awesome. Yeah, no, cool. absolutely. And yeah, just, what else we got? So I'll just kind of, tie into like a watch out, I would say on, you know, if you're kind of going down that road uh, on your own, um, a, a potential watch out could be like fiber intake. Um, so I think we all know like having, you know, adequate uh, amount of di uh, fiber is super like healthy for you. It's good for your health. Um, just the one thing to be aware of is, you know, plants and vegetables and, uh, you know, fruits all super, super high in fiber. So another thing that I'm, you know, when I talk to vegans first starting out, and this is something that I personally experienced as well when I made the transition is I was super bloated, like all the time. Um, and I wasn't really sure why until I started kind of, you know, tracking my food a little bit more and understanding it was like, wow, I went from eating essentially like no fiber to eating like, you know, 50, 60, 100 grams of fiber, like in a day. <laughs> And so like, you know, with that, your stomach is just going to like expand. You're going to feel like uncomfortable. So just that, like as a watch out, you know, if you, if you are not like more like higher fiber diet in the past and you're kind of making the transition, you shouldn't have any issues. But if you haven't, if you, somebody like me that was just focusing on eating just meat, which doesn't really have any fiber in it. Uh, and then you transition, just kind of be aware that make that transition slowly with, with foods that uh, maybe a little bit less. Uh, in fiber. So things like, uh, so, so tofu is a good example. It really doesn't have a whole lot of fiber in it. Um, you know, some of the, the, the fake meats out there, they usually don't have a lot of fiber in it either. So just to kind of get your body ramped up, um, that, that's something that I always recommend to folks. And then even looking at like, uh, like a dietary enzyme for me, I, I, I would take a Beano, uh, especially before the meals that I knew that were going to be super high in fiber. Again, just to make sure that I wasn't going to have that super bloated feeling because nobody wants to nobody wants to feel bloated. <laughs> yeah, uh, especially if you're competing. <laughs> right? Yeah, like, no, that that's you, you got to show you got to show the, the work that you've been putting in. It can't be bloated. I was going to mention Bino. That was actually going to be my question, so I'm glad you mentioned that. It's like, what are some of the things that keep preventing you from so gradually progressing into that? Uh, mode like you would do with anything right anything is progression you just, it's why people fail so often on diets in general regardless of what kind of diet it is it's because they just jump both feet in and they don't there's no planning there's no progression there's no like 
one baby step in front of the other. And that's what I do with my clients working with them is taking them one step in front of the other. It might be just, may not be even going anywhere into your vegan diet, but it may be just in how much food are you eating through the day? Let's take a look at there. Let's see, are you actually drinking any water through the day? Are you only drinking coffee? Like basic things before when it comes to, so like, I think it's hard because we get sold into believing it's, I'm just going to do keto and I'm going to lose a bunch of weight. I'm just going to be a vegan or I'm just going to do this or I'm just going to do that. And I'm, and it's like, it's got to be, especially if your diet has been so off course for so long. Again, it's kind of like, I, it makes me think of if you have, do you have a dog? I can't remember if you have a dog. Do you have a dog? Yeah. 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 So having a dog, I remember we had a big dog grow when our kids were little. It was a Swiss mountain dog. And I remember because the dogs, the bigger dogs tend to get the bloat, which was like the, the stomach torsion, yep. and they could die from that. So we were always very careful, not just because they got the same food pretty much all the time, but to make sure if we did switch the foods as you gradually progress them off of the old food before. So you, they always would say, mix some of the food in. So same idea if you're doing, say, if you want to go into vegan or veg vegetarianism or pescatarian, is to not just like turn the light switch and go over, right? It's good to transition so you don't get things like, because then that's going to deter you from wanting to stick with it, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, that, that ties well into, you know, kind of my my final kind of watch out um, is just around, like you said, is just perfectly around baby steps. Um, you know, so for me, that's when people ask me, oh, I'm looking to get into to veganism. I really, you know, I'm really interested. I'm really interested in all the benefits. Like if, you know, when, when I'm asked, um, that's always my suggestion is to kind of take baby steps and take it like one step at a time. Um, you know, it's great if you feel as though you can kind of jump in like with two feet, but you may get, as you know, Mark, you may get deterred with that. If you, if you do feel bloated or if you do feel tired or, if you, you know, if you do feel, you know, any, uh, negative side effects that come with completely changing around your diet and your lifestyle. Um, so for me, what I typically recommend is, just look to, to switch over, uh, you know, a vegan meal uh, per day for, for say like a week. So for breakfast, if you, you know, if you're interested in becoming vegan, um, if you were eating like a couple eggs with toast or something like that for breakfast, just switch out the eggs for oatmeal, have your toast with peanut butter. Um, but just make that small kind of transition for breakfast. And then once you get good at breakfast for a week, week number two, okay, keep, keep vegan breakfast, but then look to move to a vegan lunch uh, as well. And then for week three, then you kind of look to have your three main meals be vegan. And then week four is when you can kind of, uh, reassess and, you know, are you feeling good? Uh, you know, do you need to make any tweaks? And, you know, at that point, you're probably, you know, your, your body's kind of adjusted to it a bit more and you can kind of go down that path if it's something of uh, interest for you. Awesome. Such great, uh, really, really great tips there. And for, if you're listening now, even if it's on the replay, um, really it's, it's, um, it's exciting to know that you have options, right? Fortunately, just for most Americans that are be watching, even if you live outside of the country, is that for the most part, we have access to be able to give our bodies different options, whether it is going to a more vegan type of lifestyle for foods and then gradually doing that and seeing if that works. And uh, I think at the end of the day for sustainability is not only do you want to make in our busy, crazy lives things that are not just in taking baby steps to get there, just you want to enjoy it too, right? There's lots of, fortunately, there is lots of options now for people to have a vegan lifestyle and actually really enjoy it. Like, it's not like you're missing out necessarily. It's just a different lifestyle, which is, which is awesome that we even have that ability to have that kind of option. But listen, as like a parent and a coach, you know, you're a parent and you're a coach, uh, you know, you mentor people, you're a friend, you know, a brother in Christ. Like, is there anything like, know that just kind of if it's aha moments for you and for your family and your life um, that you can kind of final thoughts final tips for um, just on a personal more personal level we got the good outline but just in, in as far as how you live in your life and how vegan has really helped for that anything you can share kind of takeaway tips or last minute thoughts on that yeah, sure. sure. So I, I think we've kind of talked about, a, you know, a bit in our kind of the, the Christian men group that we have, but it's, you know, around judgment. You know, so for me, you know, like I said, this is the, you know, the dietary path that I follow and y'all is going to be different. Other people's going to be different. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't bother me. Um, so that's kind of how we have it set up with, with my family. So my wife, 
she's probably like 99% vegan. I can't remember the last time she had something non-vegan, but you know, she doesn't say that she, she's vegan just for that 1%, whatever it happens to be. Um, and then for like my kids, uh, they're probably about like 70, 75% vegan, uh, just cause those are the type of meals that we prepare, but you know, I'm not gonna, you know, hold back on their, their ice cream or their cake or going out to pizza parties or some, you know, something like that. So, you know, it's really just around, you know, what works for you. Um, and just being aware that, you know, again, everybody's different. Everybody's situation is different and just, you know, ensuring that, you know, you have to be, you know, respectful, um, of other people's views as well. And I think, uh, I'm kind of bringing that up because there's a lot of like, you know, I'd say like more like vegan activists out there that really try to, you know, push a gender on people and things like that. And, you know, for me, you're not going to get anywhere, you know, doing that. I, I think it's best just to kind of open up and share, you know, your experiences, what works well for you. Um, if others want to take a piece of it and, and try to kind of make themselves better from it, you know, th that's great. But I, I think, you know, Mark, especially with kids, you know, if you're trying to, to push anything on them, you know, they're, they're going to meet you with resistance and, you know, adults are exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I mean, you're in the stage where they're just resisting two and five year old, right? That's, uh, you got your hands full. Now mine are added 10 years to even a little bit more as having high schoolers. And what's really been great to see is regardless of what kind of diet or, or lifestyle you choose and how you eat your food is your kids are going to watch what you do at the end of the day. You know, it's, um, it's the same thing I always share, even with my kids, you show me your friends, I'll show you your future kind of thing. Well, like, let me see what your family like is life. And, and even if you don't agree, you know, when your kids don't agree when they're younger or when they're teenagers and still don't agree in a different level, um, it, it realizes they're still watching. They're still paying attention. And even if they don't say or you don't agree on things, it's, um, it's always helpful, like not just as a parent, but then, you know, also for the next generation, because at the end of the day, what's besides us looking good for competition or looking good you know, naked for our spouse or looking good and fitting in clothes and those type of things is it's for the next generation of, of kids that are to come around, right? They're, I always, like now with the way the world is and how maybe challenging and struggling is for young people to grow up in it is like, there's already enough challenges and struggles for them to have to, to deal with that. Maybe we even didn't at some, to some extent growing up with, but I would say is, is one of the things their identity and who they are is a lot from where their parents are, right? And how how they are, whether it's disciplining your kids, you know, I always say to my, my wife and I, we talk about it and, and it's something I learned in, in actually from another, another Christian friend of mine. And it's like, you know, not, it's, um, oh, what was the saying is, uh, they're gonna, well, not that they're gonna follow what you do. It was, oh, and I just lost my train of thought on it and it was really good. <laughs> um, that's what happens when you get to be old like me. Um, but they, um, oh you're you're not raising children right you're raising adults like the world needs to raise more adults to become more adults to become their own people and part of that is and it's hard as a parent because you know as when they're little they need all the dependence they, everything's dependent on you when they get older and start thinking for themselves which is probably going to come sooner than you think <laughs> is that then it's up to them to make the right decisions but having a good foundation just like we do for our clients is to help build that foundation or renovate like it's time to like overhaul maybe a bad foundation that you had as a child and now as an adult you're struggling with your weight because maybe your foundation was really pretty poor growing up you didn't have maybe not meaning you're a victim just meaning this is what you grew up in a house that had junky food it wasn't help conscious at all that let you eat chips and soda and did whatever you want ate whatever you want and you know didn't care at all like that's the difference and um i'm excited thank you so much i'll tell you what um it is awesome it's really enlightening for me i hope too for those of you that are watching so just just in closing aj where can people find you if they want to find out more information about what you do about um your coaching as well what's the easiest way to kind of tap into getting access to you and finding it yeah, for sure, Mark. So uh, pleasure to be on. Thanks for having me. Um, if you do have any interest in, you know, the vegan lifestyle, or even if you want, you know, more tips on it, um, you can uh, ping me over on Facebook. It's just AJ Mick. So AJ MC. Um, and then I'm, I'm on Instagram uh, quite a bit, just at Anthony J McMahon. So uh, those are the two places that I'm constantly kind of just posting stuff about uh, vegan lifestyle and vegan fitness.
Awesome, awesome. And uh, now, like at this part, it's just time for you guys who are listening. I hope you found value. And all we ask now is that you bless somebody else. So maybe there's somebody you're thinking of right now who tried it or wants to try vegan or is really would be interested um, in this episode. And if there's just one person that you could share this with, we'd really be grateful again. We don't do this other than just to provide value for you. And so if there's somebody you could be thinking about, share this with somebody. You can save it. You can share it to Facebook. This will also be saved uh, on YouTube. I'm not a YouTuber, but I do save it there because I know it's sometimes easier to share than just through Facebook. And uh, with that, just hook somebody up. That's all we asked. So AJ, thanks so much. Uh, appreciate you coming on here. And thanks for all of you for watching and listening, taking the time out of your day. Really appreciate it. And if we don't talk to you and hear from you soon, have an amazing Thanksgiving, whether you're going full on turkey mode or tofurkey mode, either way. Now here's a quick side. Can you fry tofurkey? Tofurkey? I don't know if you can deep fry it, could you? That would be pretty challenging. <laughs> yeah, I think that'd be, that'd be a challenge. Uh, we'll maybe save that for another episode. <laughs> All right. Take care. God bless. We'll talk soon. Thanks, Mark.